Hey there, I'm estate planning attorney Paul Rabelais, and in this video, I'll explain what typically happens when a married couple establishes their avoid probate revocable living trust, and then one spouse dies. Well, the first thing to do when one settlor or grantor, whatever the trust instrument calls them, when one settlor, I call them settlor, when one settlor dies, first thing to do is to look to the precise terms of the trust instrument. Neither me nor anyone else can tell you what is supposed to happen when one spouse dies without reviewing the specific trust instrument terms. So let's, let's look at an example. Let's say Travis and Emily set up a joint revocable living trust while they were alive and well. They wanted their children and any other beneficiaries to avoid probate after they both passed away. They wanted to specify how the trust assets were to be distributed after both Travis and Emily passed away. And they wanted to designate one or more people to be the successor trustee or co-trustees of their revocable living trust after both Travis and Emily passed away. Now let's say that Travis and Emily jointly contributed assets that at the time that Travis died were valued at $2 million. Let's further assume that Travis's portion of the assets were worth $1 million and Emily's portion of the assets were worth $1 million. The trust has the typical provision that when one spouse dies, the surviving spouse is the sole trustee. So Emily is now wondering, now that my husband Travis has died, what do I need to do? Here's what is critical to inspect the trust terms of the, the, the terms of the trust to see what actions are required at the death of the first spouse to die. What often happens is that the trust directs that the one joint trust be divided into two new trusts. Depending on the terminology used in the trust, the trust may direct that Travis's portion of the trust be transferred to the deceased spouse's trust and trust assets attributed to Emily be transferred to the survivor's trust. Now the trust may use different terminology. Maybe the trust directs the two new trusts to be called the Travis Trust and the Emily Trust. Or you may see terms in the trust instrument like family trust, marital trust, non-marital trust, Q-tip trust or bypass trust. For this explanation, I'll use deceased spouse's trust and survivor's trust. So in our example, $1 million of assets goes to the deceased spouse's trust and $1 million to the survivor's trust. First, let's talk about the survivor's trust. Typically, Emily, as the surviving spouse, would be the trustee of the survivor's trust and the trust instrument would say that Emily can do whatever she wants with the survivor's trust assets. This makes sense because these are the assets that were considered to be Emily's even before Travis passed away. So Emily can spend survivor's trust assets. She can take distributions. She's accountable to no one regarding what she does with the survivor's trust assets. Now let's talk about the deceased spouse's trust. It's really important here to look at the original Travis and Emily revocable living trust instrument, which will dictate everyone's rights and obligations in this new deceased spouse's trust. Note that this new deceased spouse's trust's terms are likely all described within the original Travis and Emily revocable living trust instrument. This new deceased spouse's trust is often referred to as a subtrust of the Travis and Emily Revocable Living Trust. So we said earlier that $1 million of the $2 million in the Travis, Travis and Emily Trust goes into the new deceased spouse's trust. So what happens to those assets? Well, Travis and Emily may have decided when they originally set up the trust that when the first spouse dies, all of the deceased spouse's assets go to the survivor's trust. Or maybe the trust instrument directs that when Travis dies first, $100,000 goes to each of Travis's three children, and the rest of the deceased spouse's trust goes to the survivor's trust. Or it is common to provide something like when Travis dies, the deceased spouse's trust becomes irrevocable, 
Emily is the trustee and is entitled to all income that the deceased spouse's trust produces for the rest of Emily's lifetime. Perhaps the deceased trust terms provide that Emily can have distributions during her lifetime of principal for her health, education, maintenance, and support. And when Emily later dies, remaining deceased trust assets revert back to Travis's beneficiaries, maybe Travis's three children. This common arrangement makes Travis's assets available for Emily's needs after Travis dies, but also protects the future inheritance rights of Travis's other beneficiaries because all deceased spouse trust assets must go to Travis's other beneficiaries when Emily dies. So while couples tend to focus in estate planning on what happens to the assets after both spouses pass away, it can be just important to be, cl uh, to be clear about exactly what should happen to the assets of the first spouse to die. Now y'all have a great day.